Hey guys, my name is Tanzil and welcome to my channel. Today we are going to see how we can install Ubuntu operating system on VMware Workstation Player. This VMware Workstation Player is a platform for running a single virtual machine on a Windows or Linux PC to deliver managed corporate desktops. Organizations use this kind of workstation player to deliver managed corporate desktops while students and educators use it for learning and training. Let's open our browser and just search for VMware workstation space player and then hit enter and in the result you can click on the first link that appears in the result that is from vmware.com and this version is free that means it is freely available for non-commercial personal and home use now from here you can see vmware workstation 16 player is the latest version and we can download it for free just click on download now and the download is going to begin it is a big file 584 mb so it might take some time to download so in the meanwhile i'll just start downloading ubuntu so open a new tab and then just search for ubuntu ubuntu is a linux distro which is based on debian it is suitable for cloud computing servers desktop and uh, internet of things devices then we have to open the first result which is from ubuntu.com just open it up you can just scroll down and check ubuntu 22.04.1 is the latest lts version of ubuntu lts stands for long term support version and uh, if you scroll down more then you can see that the latest version is 22.10 but it is not the lts version so let's stick to the lts version so i'll just click on this download button and the download of ubuntu will start and it is of 3.56 gb so it's going to take time so i'll just skip ahead to the part where all the files are downloaded all right now that you have downloaded vmware workstation as well as the ubuntu just open up your download folder where you have downloaded those files then let's start by installing the vmware workstation player just right click on it and then click on run as administrator then click on next then accept the terms in the license agreement all right then just click on next now if you want to install the enhanced keyboard driver it's a feature which is going to require like a 10 uh, mb on your host drive and it's going to force a reboot on your computer so i'll just skip it and i'll click on next all right then check for product updates on startup i'll let it be on then join the vmware customer experience now this is up to you if you want you can let it be on or you can turn it off i'll just turn it off and click on next all right then click on next and then finally install let the installation complete just click on finish now if we return back to our desktop we can see the desktop shortcut for the vmware workstation 16 player so let's open it up now and as i have explained earlier vmware workstation 16 player is free for non-commercial use in case you want to use it for commercial purpose then you'll have to buy a license and then enter it here in the software since i'm just going to use it for my personal usage so i'll just click on continue all right now this is the workstation 16 player manager from this window we can add new virtual machines or delete the old machines or whatever configuration you want to do with your virtual machines you can do all of that from here only so let's start by creating a new virtual machine then just click on i will install the operating system later all right then click on next now we have to choose the type of operating system that we are going to install so just click on linux and then under version just look for ubuntu 64 bit all right then click on next now on this page you can give a name to your virtual machine 
like by default it has given name ubuntu 64 bit now if you want to make any changes you can do that let's say i'll just add the version in the name of the virtual machine in the same way you can change it to your preference and then after that this location is showing the place or the directory where your virtual machine is going to be saved now if you want to save your virtual machine in a different folder or a different directory you can just click on browse and then browse to the directory or folder where you want to save your ubuntu so for example i'll just save it in my d drive which has a folder named virtual machines all right then just click on next and uh, here we have to specify the disk capacity like uh, the maximum disk space it is recommended that we allocate at least 60 to 80 gb for ubuntu for a smooth functioning of the operating system so i'll just allocate 100 gb if you have more space to offer you can allocate more storage to your guest operating system and then we have two options store virtual disk as a single file or split virtual disk into multiple files now the difference between these two is in terms of performance obviously the trade-off is the storage if you store the virtual disk as a single file then it's going to take up the entire 100 gb of uh, storage space right away and if you store it as split into multiple files then it's not going to use the entire 100 gb of space right away it's going to occupy the space as and when we start using the guest operating system and as and when we demand space in the operating system so this second option is more feasible more you can say efficient but if we look at performance then the first option is going to offer you a better performance i can just choose it for split virtual disk but if you have a space to spare then i'll suggest you to go for the first option anyways then just click on next and then finally we can look at the settings that have been saved for our virtual machine you can see the name the location version operating system hard disk space memory then network adapter and if you want to change the hardware profile you can just click on customize hardware from here itself then on the left panel we have the first option as memory now here we have allocated 4 gb of physical memory that is ram now if you have a lot of ram in your computer to spare for your guest operating system you can increase this allocated memory you can make it more than 4 gb but it should be less than 13.4 gb as it is suggested here memory swapping may occur beyond this size since my computer comes with 16 gb of ram so it is not wise to allocate more than 8 gb of ram to the guest operating system because my host operating system that is windows 11 it also needs ram to function properly so if i want i can increase the ram to 5 6 or 7 gb but i think 4 gb is sufficient for the ubuntu so i'll just let it be 4 then on the left panel click on processors and then here the number of processor cores are 2 so i'll just increase it to 4 this is going to enhance the performance of the operating system all right then click on new cd slash dvd sata and uh, on the right side click on use iso image file now this is the place where we have to select the iso image file of the ubuntu operating system that we have downloaded just a while ago so just click on browse and then browse to the location where you have downloaded the iso file of the ubuntu and then just select it all right now the rest of the options are fine we don't have to change anything in them unless you know what you are doing i'll suggest you not to change them and then just click on close now the all the settings are saved and just click on finish and then finally we can start our ubuntu virtual machine so for that just click on play virtual machine then we will be welcome to this window where we have to select the option like try or install ubuntu so i'll just click on that if you are trying to use your keyboard and it's not working for that you have to take your mouse pointer inside your virtual machine and then just click inside anywhere then your mouse and keyboard will be captured by the virtual machine and then you can use your keyboard and then just hit enter to select the first option all right
let me maximize it now we will be greeted with the welcome page of ubuntu here we have two options try ubuntu or install ubuntu on the left side if you want you can change the language since i'm going to do it for english so english i have selected but in case you want to change it you can change it and then just click on install ubuntu now you have to select your keyboard layout and on the left side english us has been selected automatically if you want to change it you can change it since i am from india i can look for india or indian then accordingly on the right side the keyboard layouts have changed you can see that but i'll just select english us then just click on continue and now it's asking what apps would you like to install to start with normal installation means the web browser the utilities office software game and media players will be installed while installing the operating system the minimum installation will mean the browser and the basic utilities which are needed to run the operating system will be installed and the other options are download updates while installing ubuntu now this is going to take a lot of time while the installation is in progress because it is going to download the updates and then it's going to install it so obviously it's going to take a lot of time then install third party software for graphics and wi-fi hardware and additional media formats this is for providing better support for your graphics and wi-fi or any other hardware that you have in your computer so now it's up to you which options you want to select if you want your installation to be very fast like you don't want to wait you want the installation to be finished as soon as possible then you can uncheck these two options download updates and install third party software you uncheck both of these and click on minimal installation now this is going to make the installation very fast since it is going to install only the bare necessaries to run the operating system and if you are fine with giving a little time to your guest operating system to install all the features or the utilities or the browsers or the third party software that you're going to need later then you can just click on normal installation and then tick mark both of these options and then finally click on continue then we have this option erase disk and install ubuntu now a lot of people get very confused when they see erase disk and install ubuntu since we are installing the ubuntu on virtual machine so we don't have to worry about the deletion of the disk since we have created a virtual disk for this purpose which is empty as of now so nothing is going to be deleted so we can just click on install now and finally you can click on continue all right then on this page we have to select the location where you are it is for the time zone purpose since i'm in india kolkata is selected automatically so kolkata is the time zone continue then finally i have to enter my name here if you want to keep your name and computer name different you can do that from here and you can also choose a different username also but i'll just keep them simple for now and i'll just enter a password all right then the installation is going to begin and it's going to take some time so just be patient and let the installation finish and uh, during the installation the ubuntu installer is going to download those updates and uh, try to update the installation process so we don't have to worry about anything here if your internet connection is fast then the installation will be over very soon then finally we will have this message box which says installation complete and we have to restart so just click on restart now then we'll have this message please remove the installation medium then press enter now to remove the installation medium you can just click on player on the menu bar on the top and then just scroll to this removable devices and here you can see we have this cd dvd you can just click on settings and if you want to remove it you can just click on cd dvd on the left panel and in the bottom you can just click on remove it's going to remove the cd dvd drive entirely and then finally you can just press enter and then you will be welcomed to the login page where you have to select your user id 
and then enter your password all right and ubuntu is going to boot up for you now you can connect your online accounts with your ubuntu like ubuntu single sign-on account or a google account or a microsoft account or if you just want to skip it click on skip button now help improve ubuntu you can just let it be on and click on next then privacy if you want the location services to be active you can just click on location services and let your location be on and then click on next and finally you are ready to go you can use software to install apps like this which means you can use the software or the store of ubuntu to install these kind of applications later like vlc code android studio so these can be installed later all right now updated software has been issued was released now if you want to install the updates you can click on it and check the details of the updates what are the updates that ubuntu is offering so you can choose which updates to install or just leave them if you resize the window your virtual machine window if you maximize it again your ubuntu is going to be resized according to your display settings so unlike oracle virtual box resizing the display in vmware workstation is uh, straightforward very easy we just have to maximize the window and the display gets adjusted automatically it's very easy to use VMware Workstation as compared to Oracle VirtualBox. But anyways, the installation of Ubuntu is complete and we have the full screen display as well. And for that, we just had to click on the maximize button and we have got the full screen display. Now, if you want to open the software or the Ubuntu store, you can open it up and you can look for any application that are available there. and let's say i'll just click on development and let's just try to install one application so i'll just try to install this microsoft code visual studio code so if we click on install button it's going to ask for the password enter the password and uh, just authenticate and you can see the installation has begun so it's going to download the software and then it's going to install it and the installation is complete now if you click on the show applications icon on the left bottom corner you can get all the applications that are available on your operating system for example i have installed visual studio code just now so i'll just open it up and you can see the visual studio code is working as it should that's how you can install other softwares that you need and uh, i think that's all for this video for more detail and for different topics i'm going to make different videos so i hope you like the video don't forget to give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel i'm going to see you in the next video thanks for watching